So how did a dish made for sailors become one of the most popular dishes in the UK? Well, to answer that question, we're going to need to take a journey that goes across different continents and spans over 500 years. So let's set sail. In 1510, the Portuguese invaded Goa, and they quickly took it over. So the Portuguese control of the waters over South Asia enabled them to master the lucrative spice trade. And during the 16th century, that's exactly what they did. They coordinated and consolidated their operations from their base at Goa, and they ruled Goa for over 450 years. It's crazy. So on 18th of December, 1961, the army under the rule of Commander Krishna Menon, uh, who was actually def the defense minister at the time, decided that it was time to use force. So 30,000 Indian troops with the full air and naval support started a fight. And in less than 48 hours, Goa was liberated from Portuguese rule. This legendary photo is uh, of Goa, and it depicts the tricolor being unfurled officially for the first time ever in Goa. Crazy thing is it wasn't until 1987 that the state of Goa was actually established. But since this is a food channel, you might be thinking, well, why does any of this matter? Well, let's back up a bit. So think for a moment. No Indian had ever seen a chili before the arrival of the Portuguese. Before the arrival of the Portuguese, black pepper was the spiciest thing known to Indians. With the arrival of the Portuguese, the red chili began to grow in Goa, and it was known across India as the Goai Mirchis, meaning Goan pepper. It's crazy to think about, but the iconic trademark of so many people's misconceptions that Indian food is all hot and spicy came from an ingredient that wasn't even originally from the subcontinent. It was actually from Mexico. But after the Colombian exchange, many cultivars of the chili pepper spread around the world and it was used for both traditional medicine and food. And the Portuguese had their hands on everything at this point in time in the world thanks to their naval prowess. And so they brought Murchi to India, likely by the way of Goa. But here's the thing, that isn't all they brought. The Portuguese also brought with them from their travels in Brazil along with things like the tomato and potatoes and pineapple and cashew. So the Portuguese sailors would set sail for these huge journeys to India and a journey that would last three or more months. And understandably, the Portuguese wanted things that reminded them of home. They needed things that wouldn't spoil on this three month long journey. And so they would carry provisions like onion and garlic and wine and dried meats these things would have a really hard time spoiling, and so it made a lot of sense in their journey. And to preserve meat for long durations, the Portuguese would develop this unique style of marinating. The meat was immersed in the stock of vinegar and salt and garlic and wine, and it would enhance the flavor of these things. These ingredients would be packed in wooden barrels, and they would alternate layers of pork and garlic and red wine soaked, and they would call this a dish. They would call it the... Carne de vino y alos. The little translation would mean meat and garlic marinade. But since the Portuguese at this time occupied Goa, well, let's just say the locals got a hold of this dish and they would be tasked to make it. According to an incredible food historian, uh, Lizzie Collingham, in her book, Curry, A Tale of Cooks and Conquerors, like many non-native languages, pronunciation over time got messed up and the locals would call this dish vino de albos. See, in India, the dish was tweaked again to meet local conditions because Indians did not make vinegar. It wasn't something that was typical in India. So some indigenous Franciscan priests are said to have solved this problem, and they solved it by manufacturing vinegar from coconut toddy. This is known as toddy palm. And the alcoholic drink fermented from the sap of this palm tree. It was combined with tamarind pulp and plenty of garlic to satisfy the Portuguese palate. Well, the clever locals, they weren't done there. See, they knew their land, and they were masters of their spices. 
And so they decided to add this basic sauce. They added local black pepper, they added cinnamon, they added cardamom and cloves, and a key ingredient that gave this super wonderful bite to this grainy sauce, it was the red chili. That was the legacy of the Portugal's global empire. It was imported from India by way of the Americas. And this iconic mirchi, this iconic red chili, was now part of this yet dish. And at this point, you may be thinking, well, what dish is this? Do you know? Well, that dish is Vindaloo. But the real question here is, how did Vindaloo become so popular? Well, to answer that question, we need to kind of kind of get some backstory a little bit more. See, like all things, religion ended up playing a pretty big role into that answer. There was mass conversions of uh, the Goan population in the 16th and 17th centuries, and Christianity paved the way for the addition of pork and beef to the Goan diet. Well, Vindaloo was in, introduced to the British as, as way of colonization of India, and it gathered steam in the 1800s when Goans were employed to cook. The Christians were... The Christ, these Christian cooks were free from caste and religion and the restrictions that were placed on it when it comes to food. Um, the Hindus were and Muslims all had a lot of different religious obligations and religious faux pas of cooking certain things, and Christianity didn't have that. And so these Christian going cooks were free to cook with pork and beef, respectively, and they became in very high demand at this time. A recipe for Vinhalu, as the enunciation went, is mentioned in a book that was published in 1888 and it's called The Wife's Help to Indian Cookery. And it describes a dish that is a Portuguese caray. It says, the best vindaloo is prepared with mustard oil, beef, pork, duck, and made into this excellent curry. You may be thinking, mustard oil in vindaloo? But 1888, The Wife's Help of, to, to Cooking Indian food was was calling for this but at the time it started becoming immensely unpopular in britain in the 70s the 1970s when a large number of indian restaurants opened across the country it gained this notoriety as the spiciest dish on the menu and all these spicy vindaloo challenges became fashionable after a couple of pints of beer at the local pub the vindaloo that most Westerners are familiar with bears so little resemblance to the aromatic sour pickle of the original Goan vindaloo. A Goan vindaloo traditionally is not this mind-blowingly spicy curry, as so many people have come to know across the UK, but a rich and hot and sour and slightly sweet gravy kind of reminds you of another iconic Goan dish, and that's balcho. Now listen. The vindaloo we get in the West is completely unrecognizable to somebody from Goa. It resembles this sweet and sour meat-based curry rather than the authentic dish. But is that necessarily wrong? Well, yes, it is. But also no. See, Western vindaloo was the first dish I ever tried at a local restaurant. It was delicious. Granted, the dish that I knew as vindaloo at the time would never be known as vindaloo in Goa, but I still know that it, it's this tasty dish. And if a dish opens up curiosity and passion for somebody to try more, is that necessarily bad? Well, let me know in your, your thoughts. I want to hear what you think in the comments below. And I don't know the answer to this question. It's the age-old question of tradition versus authenticity versus progression, right? And I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I do know that there's something to be said by honoring local cultures, traditions, and especially in a dish. So now you know the history of Vindaloo. And next time, think of this. Think of all the work that went into this wonderful Vindaloo, all the time and effort it took across continents and a 500-year journey. Hope you share this video and consider liking and please subscribe. If you're kind of a foodie nerd like me and you love food from the subcontinent, hopefully you walk away and learn something today. And most of all, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks.